Anytime you do what God does, you will get what God also got. The day you surprise God, that is the day that an end will be seen happening to your history to give you a future that is greater than your history. I pray that your anointing will break through the panels of the screen and touch the people in their different homes, in their different institutions where they are watching us live. Blessed be the name of the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. I want to bring greetings from Calvary to your beloved home, your businesses, from any part of the world by which you are hearing me right now. I want to bless God who has kept us alive in this part of eternity till now. And I know the reason why we are still alive is for His glory and to do his will continually let us pray our heavenly father today i come before you as your servant in your name in your power i declare that as i minister let the heavens be open lord let there be random deliverance let your people begin to feel the impact of your grace wherever they are listening to me lord i pray let the anointing just go ahead and break every yoke and burdens, and may we be free from the shackle of hell in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for whom you are, for in Jesus' much less name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Hallelujah. Child of God, I, I bring Calvary's greetings from the Megafire Deliverance Assembly and the Megafire Ministries to your doorstep. And today, I want us to discuss a very, very important issue that will be a blessing, a big blessing to your life, to your destiny. A child of God, you know, recently somebody came to me and was asking me and telling me that, Bishop, why is it that since I gave my life to Christ, why is it that since I became born again, I am not productive the way I used to be when I was in the world. I said, you know what? When you were in the world, you had the freelance, you had the grace to do anything without considering the laws and the principle of what governs the issues of life. So also when you are in Christ Jesus, if you want to succeed, there are laid down principle, divine principle. In fact, what this uh, person brought up to me opened up a new path. It opened up a new dimension, a new portal of strategic engagement with the issues of life. So today, we are going to be looking at how, as believers, how should we strategically engage life in our day-to-day -day work in this part of eternity. I repeat, how should we engage life in our day-to-day -day work in this part of eternity? As born-again children of God, how do we engage life? How do we engage life strategically in this part of eternity? So that at the close of the age, either via rapture, or via death, before death or before rapture, like Paul, you will be able to boldly stand to say, I have finished my course. That means you know within yourself that everything that God has called you to achieve, to become, you have done everything without anything left. That is the type of life that God wants you and I to live. Child of God, it is important that you understand that there is a difference between the life of Christ and the principles of Christ. You must understand that. 
when you receive Jesus as your Lord and your personal Savior, you received the life of Christ. Now we're talking about the issue of holiness, righteous living, and the faith of Jesus. But there is also the principles of Christ. The principle of Christ, as I grew up as a child of God, I began to learn by both inspiration, intuition, by divine impact, by study, to show myself approved. I began to understand that the life of Christ, the person of Christ, and the principles of Christ are two different things. So you may, when you when you accept the life of Christ, the implication is that when you die or when there is rapture, you will go to heaven. But hear me, if you don't apply the principles of Christ, even though you have the life of Christ, hear me, you are going to go to heaven uh, either via rapture or via death. You will go to heaven. But one thing you need to understand is this, that without application of the principles of Christ, in this present world, the strategic capacity of your manifestivity and your productivity will be so slim. And that is why in the case of Abraham and Lazarus, God was trying to paint these two pictures. As a child of God, you can choose to live the life of Christ and still remain a Lazarus. As a child of God, you can still decide to have the life of Christ and apply the principles of Christ and your life will become an Abraham. Now, what that simply means is that you, you can choose to be a frustrated Christian and die a frustrated Christian or you can choose to be a more than a conqueror Christian like Abraham that had army he was an intercessor he was a negotiator he was he was virtually everything that anyone will need in the place of the activations of the principle of Christ so God expect you and I to begin not just to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior, but to begin to apply the principles and the precept of Christ in our education, in our career, in our ministry, in everything that we do. Because the principles of Christ is what guarantees and grants a lot of victories in this part of eternity. Now, how do we know or how do we apply the principle of Christ? The first thing that you must understand is by going back to the nature of creativity for us to do a relative, a relative analysis. How did God succeed? And now we are created in the image and the likeness of God. So if we are created in the image and the likeness of a snake, we need to go back to a snake and know how does a snake succeed? If we are created in the image and the likeness of the sand or the image and the likeness of a lion, we need to go back to the lion to know how did the lion succeed. So also, if you are created in the image and likeness of a rock or a mountain, we need to go back to the mountain and look how the mountain succeed in this part of the world. If you are created in the image and the likeness of an astronaut, we need to go back to the astronaut, uh, the astronaut planet to see how they succeed. But glory be to God in Christ Jesus. Child of God, hear me. Can I shock you? We were not created in the image of animals. We were not created in the image of lions. We were not created in the image of rocks and stones. We were not created in the image of the sun or the moon. But we were created... In the fullest capacity, we were divinely sculptured in the in the mannerism of divine creativity, and that is exactly where our topic is coming out from. Because our, our our creativity is in the image and the likeness of God, so we are going to be studying the image and the likeness of God, the way God sculptured us for greatness. If you want to become great in this part of life, you need to go and study the sculptured capacity of God. Why? Because 
in the nature of the sculptural capacity of God, that was how we were made. So, if we go to the book of Genesis, if you go to the book of Genesis, in verse, in verse 26 of chapter 1, the Bible said, And God said, Let us sculpture man in our image. Hold on, hold on, child of God, hold on. Not in the image of a lion, not in the image of a rock, not in the image of the sun, no, not, but in the image of God. Do you know that God is the greatest thing that have ever happened from the beginning of this war? That is why the topic is reflecting that way. Are you getting what I'm saying? That is why the, we are using that topic, sculptured for greatness, because God is the greatest of the greatest of the greatest of the greatest thing that can ever be, that has ever been, and that we ever be. And God said, I sculptured you after myself, the great I am. I sculptured you after my personality, after my mannerism, after my intuition, after my capacity, after my, 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 Anything you can think about me, I package them together and I created you. So man was sculptured for greatness. So what does it mean for, for man to be sculptured for greatness, in greatness, by greatness? The only way we can understand this is when we look at God who is great. How does he operate? For him to be great. The Bible said, and God said, Let us make man, let us clutter man in the greatness of our capacity, in our image. After our likeness, the way we are, we are great. Let them be great. How will they be great? Number one, let them have dominion over the fishes of the sea. Let's hold it there. Now, God in creating man said number one man has dominion have the capacity let them have they have not had but they can have so until a man understand that my my potentiality can become my capacity until you come to a level whereby you understand that by divine creativity, man has dominion not just over the fish of the water, but the fish of the sea. Do you know what that means? The God, when God was speaking in verse 27, 26, at this point, hope you know that God is a spirit. God is is a spirit speaking so when god was talking about the fish of the sea god was seeing both the spiritual fishes and the physical fishes and any type of fish you can think about so what that means in this place we can take out that phrase fish of the sea and we put marine kingdom so the marine kingdom is divided into two is divided from the spiritual marine kingdom and the physical marine kingdom and the study of the physical marine kingdom and the oceans and the landscape in the water is known as oceanography but hear me there is a different study that no matter how great you are as an oceanographer you cannot understand it because it's in the realm of the spirit there are marine witchcraft spirit marine witchcraft spirit there are marine pythonic spirit there are different storehouses there are different locations there are different there are levels of spirit but hear me god said if you want to look like the way i am you must not see yourself as having and not putting it into manifestation you must understand that in your gene, your gene, you carry, you carry the capacity to dominate the marine kingdom. It does not matter whether it's the queen of the coast, whether it's any, no, no matter how you think about it. An example was found in the life of Mo 
Moses. When God wanted to show Moses how wonderful he was captured for greatness, God told him, the first thing I want you to show that is hidden inside of you, you have dominion over the marine kingdom. Are you hearing me? The first place that Moses went, the first place that Moses visited was also the first place God talked about in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Have dominion. Let them have dominion over the marine kingdom. And when Moses, who has been sculptured from greatness, wanted to manifest that greatness, the first place God took him to was the marine kingdom. And God called him, Mr. Man, inside your genotype, in your creativity, there is greatness. But that greatness cannot come to pass until you manifest the dominion over the marine kingdom. And he, Moses said, I don't understand what you are talking about. God said, you don't understand? You have been sculptured for greatness. But that greatness cannot be seen until you first of all conquer the marine kingdom, both physical and spiritual. Child of God, Moses now carried out an act that shocked the whole marine kingdom. The Bible said, when he carried the Lord of dominion and power and striked it in the marine kingdom, the Bible said all the blood banks, all the demonic fishes, all the satanic and the luciferic capacity, all the dragon in the water, all the activities of the marine witchcraft kingdom that entered into alliance with Pharaoh to put the people of God under bondage. The Bible said every of their capacity. The Bible said every of their stronghold. The Bible said every of their blood covenant. The Bible said in one minute, the whole river, the marine kingdom, turned into blood. Child of God, I want to prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that carry Holy Ghost thunder. I challenge every marine kingdom, every class, every kind of the marine kingdom that has held you bondage. All the covenant from the marine kingdom that has chained you down in the name of Jesus by the dominion of God upon my life. In the name of Jesus, you watching me now, I declare all the bondages over your life, all the bondages over your marriage, all the bondages over your children, all the bondages over your ministry, from the marine witchcraft kingdom, I command their yoke, break in the name of Jesus. I command their yoke, causing sickness, break in the name of Jesus. I command their power, yoking you down to oppressive tendency. Let them be broken by fire. We have dominion. We have been sculptured for greatness. When we speak, God answer. Because we are created in his image. When God spoke in Genesis, things were not the same again. I prophesy to you, wherever you are watching me now, every source of your problem, all the source of your problem that is from the marine kingdom today in the name of Jesus Christ son of the living God because I and you we are sculptured for greatness I prophesy let the rain of fire let the rain of thunder lightning and earthquake locate all the strongholds all the capacities of the marine kingdom that have held your blessing that have held down your promotion that have held down your marriage that have held down your breakthrough by fire by thunder let the sword of God's judgment begin to break their yoke begin to break their yoke you watching me over there every yoke over your neck every yoke over your children every 
clean yoke over your womb from the marine kingdom in the name of Jesus on whom we have dominion we begin to break their stronghold in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth child of God I want you to know I want you to know that you are sculptured you are sculptured for greatness I want you to know that you are sculptured for greatness you will never notice that greatness until you address the bible said in verse 26 the first thing god addressed was the marine kingdom in the days of moses the first thing he addressed was the marine kingdom child of god as you follow god's pattern you will see greatness begin to come out of you in the name of jesus every of your greatness every of your virtue every of your increase that has been stolen by the marine kingdom in the name of jesus from this pulpit i prophesy from this tv station i prophesy anyone that has stolen your virtue anyone that has stolen your money no matter how small anyone that has stolen your property anyone that has stolen your character anyone that has stolen your healing anyone that has stolen your blessing if i be the servant of god i prophesy to every one of them the judgment of god will come upon their head I am the, Daba Shakata. the judgment of god will locate them by fire hear me until you address the marine kingdom just like god address the marine kingdom until you address the marine kingdom just like moses address the marine kingdom hear me and hear me well your greatness will be lying low but today in the name of jesus i declare every conspiracy every conspiracy from the marine kingdom against your life against your life against your health anyone going to a shrine dedicated to the marine witchcraft god wanting to take your life wanting to take your property wanting to take your destiny if i be the servant of jehovah this morning this afternoon this evening wherever you are hearing me i pray that every one of them they will begin to somersault they will vomit blood and die they will somersault in the name of jesus they somersault they vomit blood and they die no power from hell no power from the kingdom of darkness have the right to abuse you in the marine kingdom because you are sculptured for greatness because you carry dominion over every fowl of the water number two number two quickly before we pray <coughs> in verse 26 of genesis chapter 1 genesis chapter 1 verse 26 if you want to see the fullness of your greatness that god has clothed your image the second thing you need to do about having dominion over the marine kingdom by the power of the holy ghost the next thing you need to do is to begin to see greatness the dominion greatness emerge from your life when you begin when you begin to engage the activities of the heavens that is why the book of genesis 26 now said that if you want to be great like god in his image and likeness the second attack the second engagement that you need to understand and apply the principle in life is for you to understand the principle of the oppressions of the heavens not just the third heaven not only the second heaven but the first heaven the second heaven 
and the third heaven. You need to understand the workings of the principle so that at the end of the day, your life will be a life of dominion over everything that flies in the air. The world, fowls of the air, talks about everything that flies in the heavens. Everything that operates both in the first heavens, in the second heaven, and in the third heaven. You must understand the principles of how things work in the first heaven, how things work in the second heaven, how things work in the third heavens, so that you can have dominion power over everything that flies in the air, over every activities of the power of darkness in the air. The Bible recorded in Revelation chapter 12, something happened in Revelation chapter 12 verse 1 down to 4. The woman that was pregnant never understood the principle, yet the new child that was born understood the principle. Even though both of them represent child of God, child of God, but one was living the life of Christ and never understood the principle. But Jesus that was born, who is representing the child, was the life of Christ and also understood the principle. The Bible said when he understood the principle, he was no longer struggling. The Bible said, and he went forth. Immediately he was born and was caught up to God in heaven. That's a principle we shall come back next time to address for us to know how God's club told us for greatness. Thank you and God bless you. Please, if you have not accepted Jesus, everything I've been saying may not have meaning to you. Give him your heart, accept him, receive him into your heart, and he shall be well with you. In the name of Jesus. God bless you and I love you all. Anytime you do what God does, you will get what God also got. The day you surprise God, that is the day that an end will be seen happening to your history to give you a future that is greater than your history. I pray that your anointing will break through the panels of the screen and touch the people in their different homes, in their different institutions where they are watching us live.